What's up guys, it's boy Justin with a special Canada's Day review, even though this has nothing to do with Canada's Day. I was originally supposed to do a X-Men Alpha Flight re review, but uh, yeah, I didn't have time. I was supposed to have Friday off, but uh, you know, certain someone was like, why are we taking Friday off when everybody's taking Monday off? My wife has Monday off. <laughs> so, it's like, so it's like, no, so I had to work Friday, right, which is cool. So yeah, I was planning on reviewing, reading X-Men and reviewing it today, but I didn't have time. So instead, we're reviewing Transfers, Transfers, which is a 1984 proto Full Moon Pictures film. Because this movie is directed by Charles Band, one of the famous directors of Full Moon Pr Pictures, which is a notorious movie studio that I, I don't even know the full history of it other than pretty much like the guy who runs it will draw a poster come up with a title and the directors directors will be given the freedom to make whatever movie they want as long as it fit the poster <laughs> at least that's what I heard uh, from like Stuart Gordon when he did his Castle Freak movie Review, uh, movie, right? So yeah, this movie is uh, tech noir as hell action sci-fi film, which some comedy, but not really. Directed by Charles Band, came out in 1984, and stars Tim Thomerson as Trooper Jack Death, and you won't believe this, Helen Hunt as Lena, which is like this is one of. Uh, I heard this is like Helen Hunt's first theatrical th like movie role even though this movie is only like an hour and like 13 minutes not including the credits. You have Michael Stefani as Martin Whistler, Biff Menard as Hap Ashley, Thel Thelma Hopkins as Engineer Ruth Reigns and Art Lefer as McNulty right who's like Trooper Jack Def's um, superior officer. Right at the four. So the movie takes place in 20, 2022, for, sorry, 2247, right in Angel City because in, because Los Angeles was uh, destroyed in a massive earthquake, <laughs> right? And uh, our our main character is basically a cop slash bounty hunter. Who goes around killing trancers? Which trancers? You think are they basically replicants? Yes and no, right? <laughs> In fact, the movie reminded me a lot of the cartoon Spiral Zone. Which, if you haven't seen Spiral Zone, check it out. It's a decent show. Um, we're gonna review it at some point. But the, yeah, the movie basically feels just like fucking Blade Runner as fuck in the beginning of the movie. Uh, which this is going to be a movie review where this movie is so crazy I have to spoil the whole thing. So if you want to watch the movie for yourself, I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube and I'm pr and it is on Tubi. So uh, though I don't know if Tubi has all the movies, which there's at least five of them, right? Which makes no sense because of the ending. <laughs> but yeah, so the movie starts off with Trooper Death, like goes to a 1950s style diner. There's only one guy there, and he's like. I want you to take the you know what test, the uh, whatever, right? The our knockoff of the V, the Voigt Ragnar whatever test from uh, Blade Runner, right? And the guy's like, I have my rights, and here's your fucking rights. <laughs> it's like, he takes out the shittiest laser pistol I've ever seen in any sci-fi slash slash uh, sci-fi movie and TV show. It makes the fucking laser guns from Babylon 5 look cool. Actually, not really, but it does look dumb as fuck, right? And only for him to find realize that the transfer was actually was actually the, uh, the diner, ho uh, uh, what's it called, the waitress <laughs> at the diner, right? But transfers are basically cultists of peep of this psychic who is. Who uh, is basically using his psych psychic powers, which we never really see, 
uh, turning weak-willed people into uh, homicidal zombies, right? Where they get, like, all green and yellow. And, and Well, they'll look normal until they snap, and then they basically become zombies where they'll use weapons. They try to bite you try to bite you which the main character Jack Def has uh, he doesn't really use martial arts he mostly uses his a punch and a gun but he has this self-defense maneuver where he'll basically foot if some if one of the transfers tries to bite him he basically basically fish hooks them and pulls them off, off him right which is like holy fuck you never, like, I've never seen any zombie movie do that, and that actually looks like that would kind of fucking work. So it's like, I find that interesting, like, well, in this movie that's not, that doesn't really, isn't about zombies, but it's like, has like a, you know, a really cool, like, move that you could use against zombies, which I would like to see in an actual zombie movie. So yeah, he singes the the transfer because after you kill the transfer it, it it basically turns to ashes it glows and turns the ashes right and makes a scorch mark on the ground so after that he gets kicked off the force because he was supposed to be doing like something else and it turns out the whole reason why he has this hate boner for transfers because he lost his wife uh to uh transfer like bait like tr transfer sting de uh, detail right so yeah, he, he quits the force to go and um, to go scavenge for like you know, um, metal objects in the ocean or whatever. He, you see him dive, right? And he gets he he gets approached by Art Lefer saying, to him, "Hey, we know where Whistler is, right? You, and you need to go see the council." So that's where we get the time travel stuff, where they, he gets to the three wise men, which one of them's a woman. The three, three wise uh, members, and one of them's dead, and it turns out that Whistler, the homicidal cultist leader, uh, is pissed off that the cops have been hunting down his uh, cultist, and has gone to the past, which is 1985 Los Angeles, to wipe out the descendants of, the, of not, not just the people who run Angel City, but also Jack Def himself, right? So how the time travel works in the movie is is they ba basically they put you in a, co a coma and you go down the line, which you tr you travel to the body of your ancestor of the time period you want to be in, right? So it's kind of like it's like a mix of qu quantum leap. It's kind of like a quantum leap. But it's funny, right before, right before he goes into his, the body of his ancestor, he sees that they ca captured the real body of uh, Martin Whistler, and he fucking just shoots it dead. Because <laughs> they originally want him to go travel back to the past and bring him forcibly bring him back to the present so he can put on trial. He's like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> shoots him dead on on the bot. On the table, which he's, which th that doesn't mean the Martin Whistler in the past is dead because he's currently in the body of his ancestor, which it turns out he's and that Jack Def's ancestor was a journalist who looks exactly just like our main character except for he doesn't have a scar, and uh, and the 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 Martin Whistler's fucking uh, ancestor was a loot a. L.A. Detective Lieutenant. So he's like, no, that's a, the, the guy's like, it's a minor problem. You call that fucking minor? Because <laughs> he basically has to go to the past of his an and taking, using the body of his ancestor has to kill a fucking L.A. P PD detective, man. Which he doesn't have to, but it would make it easier, right? So yeah, he goes to the past. They give him basically a uh, policeman 38 special he can't take his laser gun to the pass uh, that in the in the hilt or handle has like two vials right that will allow him to go back to his body in the present and they give him this this uh, stopwatch wristwatch that if he presses it 
it gives them the ability to stop time for for 10 seconds basically right so he well it's not he's not really stopping time but it stops it basically it makes one second 10 seconds right so he can basically he basically has the flash power the basically has do slash flash powers for 10 seconds right which uh he only uses like two or three times in the movie and, and each time was actually pretty cool so yeah what i forgot to mention this movie when he goes back in time it takes place during christmas so if people are like oh this movie's a great movie to watch during christmas <laughs> this fucking b movie that had a budget of four hundred thousand. What the fuck? B movies? Like, I I've seen independent movies that have like le that have like less than like five thousand, and they're not called B movies. But this movie that's called a, a B movie has a has almost half a million budget, and it's called a B movie. What the fuck? I, I, I don't know. Because the movie does not look that cheap until like the very end. Where they probably obviously lost some money. I mean lost all their money. So yeah. What happens. He goes back in time. It turns out he just had a one night stand. With the beautiful, young and beautiful Helen Hunt. Right. Which he goes to the body of his ancestor. I forget his ancestor's name. And it looks. He pretty much looks just like him. Right. And which the main character he's like 30, 37, and the um, Helen Hunt I think is like nineteen or twenty in the movie. <laughs> she looks super young, and she's like, "Hey, you gotta take me, get up. You gotta take me to the to work." She's working as uh, Santa's helper at the mall, right? <laughs> Where we find out that not only is Martin Whistler, you know, going around killing the ancestors of the um, of the police chiefs or whatever, he's also turning people into transers, right? So you have a the first present time battle takes place at the fucking mall, right? Where they basically, where our main character basically kills a Santa in front of a bunch of kids, which that Santa was fucking going homicidal as fuck. So it's like. It was clear self-defense. Why the fuck are the cops like hunting him down? Right? The 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 uh, police detective shouldn't have that much pull. Where like, oh yeah, despite the fact that it's like self-defense. Yeah, we're gonna go hunt, have everybody hunt, hunt him down. Right? Oh my god. So yeah, basically. So yeah, he's able. Our main character, Dak Jack Def, is able to convince Lena. His uh, ancestor's girlfriend. Uh, that he's basically a cop from the future, and they have to. He, she has to help him. Help him go and find the ancestors of the police chiefs, and you know, basically, you know, protect them, right? So yeah, there's like, I don't want to. I, I kind of don't want to spoil the whole movie because the the movie is great, and you should check it out. <laughs> If you like wacky B movies, this is like this is a fucking fun movie to watch. And aesthetically, it doesn't look that fucking bad. There's actually some cool shots in the fucking movie. Like people were like, like only the the main character of the movie could like make a make a ha, make an action scene on a scooter look cool. <laughs> there's a shoot. Oh, there's a chase scene where he's riding a scooter and you see him like fire the pistol, which apparently the there's actually a ba a Blade Runner connection with this movie. The the main actor um what's his name? T Tim Thomerson was in the National Guard and served in the same tank you tank company as Brian James, which Brian James was an actor who played one of the replicates from fucking Blade Runner. So it's like, oh my, what are the chances two guys in the fucking National Guard would become actors and would, one would be in Blade Runner and one would be a Blade Runner ripoff. <laughs> which the movie is not like, which the movie 
genre-wise, is not cyberpunk. Everybody calls the movie cyberpunk. It's more tech noir to the point where there's a point in the mo movie where they're at a ch at a Chinatown motel, right, where our main character is about to bang Helen Hunt, Lena, but like our McNulty in his uh, body of his ancestor, which happens to be a little girl, shoots him and sends him back to the past, <laughs> to the present. Where it's sort of like, oh, he didn't get uh, to give, like, to, like, give him order, new orders or whatever. They want to replace him. He's like, fuck that. I, I, I got a lead on your uh, ancestor, which is a homeless guy who used to be a, a baseball player, right? Th this guy went east down and down, down, down to the gutter. <laughs> well, this is more west coast. Yeah, it's west coast. Uh, no, no, is it West Coast? No, it's East Coast. Yeah, yeah. He went east down and down to the gutter. <laughs> this guy. Sorry to repeat the, the quote. So, like, yeah, the, he gets back to his body after, like, after his answer's body after the they had sex. And he's like, God damn it. <laughs> I could have fucked a 19-year-old. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Which, there's a twist in the climax where... After they save the baseball player, they decide to uh, stage a trap for Whistler. Where it is revealed that Lena is actually the... Actually another ancestor of Jack Death. Because Jack Death's ancestor was going to bang Lena and basically create Jack Death's bloodline, right? So it's like... Oh my god, uh, the, what a twist. And at this point, he has not actually fucked Lena. It was his ancestor, right? So, what do you think happened to the movie? So, basically, he has to lose... Basically, during the final fight scene of the movie, the... So, despite the gun not taking any... The handle not taking any damage, the vials that were in the, the handgun's handle gets damaged and there's only one of them right so instead of killing Whistler's ancestor he decides to use the file to send him back which he's basically dead because he has no body to return to right uh, but that leads to the problem now that Jack now that means Jack death is stuck in the present so what do you think happens right he basically rides out into the sunset well it's it's still nighttime with with Lena Right. Who we established is basically his ancestor. So he's, there's incest in the movie. Apparently Lena's like, does not does not give a fuck that, oh yeah, this guy's technically my, whatever. <laughs> uh, my descendant, which, oh my god. So I'm just gonna go. There's other shit to talk about this movie, but you know what, I... I, I Watch it for yourselves. It's on Tubi. And the movie's super fucking short. Holy Christ. Right. Oh my god. And I only pretty much watched this movie as an excuse to cheat on my diet. Which the, which was not worth the all the exercise I had to do to burn off the, the fucking three pounds I gained. <laughs> the pizza was shit. The wing, the wings were dry, but the so the barbecue sauce on the wings were actually good. And I can't tell you what the name of the pizza place because it's not a chain. So you would, you know, figure out where I where I'm at pretty fucking quick. Oh my god. So yeah. Um. So yeah. Let's go with my likes and dislikes. Jack Death was Jack Death. The kill character was pretty good. Uh, the movie. The movie's fun. It, it very much, it does a good job of the tech noir. Like it, it's cyberpunk. It's more tech noir than cyberpunk, but it, like it handles the genre pretty well. Right. The, there's some cool shots in the movie. There, there's some good comedy. Right. The acting is pretty good. Like Helen Hunt was fantastic in this movie. Uh, and it looks fucking gorgeous. You never see your tits. If you're wondering, she's does. You never see her boobs, right? Apparently, you can't see her naked in the sessions, which is like a 2013 or whatever movie. But she's like fit. She's like 
four, late 40s and 50s in that movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> damn it, Helen Hunt. Why couldn't you get naked in this movie? <laughs> Which Helen Hunt is like a punk rocker in the movie. And there's a scene where like they go to this uh, punk rock club and um, and uh, there's like a punk rock playing, playing, playing Christmas music and uh, Jack Depp's like, Huh, now I know why they call these guys punks. <laughs> Which, yeah, and there's also stuff in this movie where they kind of, like... I don't know if they intentionally reference... Uh, do, like, do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which was the book that Blade Runner was based off, except for the title. Blade Runner, they bought that off a different book, which, if anybody fucking knows the name of the cyberpunk book that Blade the Blade Runner name is from let me know in the comments because i can't i can't fucking find that online <laughs> oh my god but yeah they, they were making this felt you know in some ways this felt more like the blade a blade runner like movie than uh than the fucking actual blade runner movies right because there's a point where like the they're eating chinese food and she's like he's like what's in it and he's like beef Beef, as in from cows, because in the Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep novel, they're all like high moralist, um, high moralist uh, ve vegetarians, right? Because animals went, almost every animal went extinct, so they don't eat meat anymore. To a point where, like, it's like considered highly immoral to kill animals and even other humans. That's why. The main character is so tortured in that book because he's going around killing and robots that look like people, right? And they're they're not even made out of metal and shit anymore. They're like bioorganic, the newer the newer ones, right? Oh, so yeah. At some point, I'm gonna read I'm gonna read that book again and review it for the channel. But yeah, I love this movie. Uh, the problems of the movie is the movie's climax, though it was good, it, action wise was not. And would have been nice because the guy was supposed to be this psychic, and he never like you know he didn't other than his abilities to turn people to the ho homicidal zombies, right? Uh, he didn't really have any other psychic powers. Like what the fuck? You, you're basically uh some kind of super powered hypnotist. What the fuck? And this movie almost has a similar premise to the Japanese 1997 film Cure. But that was like a guy hypnotizing people into killing themselves in the most gory way as fuck. Where this guy is killing people by, you know, um, you turning people into homicidal maniacs. So yeah, awesome movie. I'll pro I kind of want to go check out the other transfer movies. <laughs> And I, oh my god, after watching this movie. Yeah, so. Apparently this movie, a lot of the actors from this movie were also in a movie called Zoom, sorry, Zone Troopers. So I might review that movie at some point. But I'm probably going to, my next movie reviews are probably going to be the other movies on that poll. So yeah, this movie, if you're not a fan of B movies, you're probably not going to like this movie. But this movie is like a solid, like 6 out of 10, you know. And it's... it's I I I think the movie is worth watching. So check it out. Peace. And it's on Tubi. Check it out.